Good afternoon and welcome to Food for Thought. My name is Pastor Clint Lang from Hillside Community Church in 100 Mile House, BC, Canada. It's the 28th of May, 2020. Just want to welcome all of you who are tuning into this broadcast today. If you're new here, uh, welcome. Um, for those that are returning and have been following our devotional broadcast over the last number of days, um, we've been talking about the uh, Beatitudes in Matthew chapter 5, Beatitudes that Jesus Christ explained to the people that were sitting and listening to his teaching, the attitudes that God desires people to have, um, and how God blesses people who take on the attitudes that uh, come from uh, connection with him. We have to be connected to God before we're able to display these attitudes the way that pleases God. And he's made a way for that. And, um, you know, today I'd like to continue on with this passage of scripture in Matthew chapter 5, verse 6. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Now, that particular scripture, um, when we look at it, hunger and thirst for righteousness. Now, before we come to know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, the Bible says that because all of us are sinners and fall short of the glory of God, that we're separated from God by this wall of sin. It's like a, a barrier between us and God where we're spiritually dead to Him. And we're dead in our sins, dead in our transgressions, the Scriptures say. But Jesus Christ, being the sin bearer, came to die instead of us so that the death that has come through sin that has separated us from God can be removed when Jesus Christ takes away that sin. So for us, before we become believers, you know, we're motivated by a whole bunch of different things. Our, our thinking process is a lot in terms of everything that's happening around us. You know, our senses, our eyes, our ears, our our sensory um, things draw our attention. So our pursuits are along those lines. They're, you know, pursuing, we're pursuing things in the physical realm, in the world around us, specifically things that affect our senses. Now, the Bible says before we come to know Jesus, that there's a spiritual deadness that separates us from him. But when we come to know Christ, all of a sudden, there is a change. The Bible says we're born again in the Spirit. It's like we've come to life. Our sins are washed away, and the Holy Spirit takes residence within us, where God actually comes and lives inside of the believer who has had the sacrificial work of Christ applied to his innermost being. That person is cleansed. Jesus' work has paid the full price of separation from God, the price of spiritual death. And, you know, he's taken that upon his shoulders and now there's an avenue made for us to boldly come into the presence of God. Now, a person that comes to know Christ, all of a sudden, their perspective change. Where we become alive. And a person who truly believes develops a spiritual appetite, a hunger and what is that hunger? The hunger for the Word of God. The hunger is to actually know God, to, to come to know Him more. It's like when you open the door to this brand new life uh, of spiritual aliveness, you want to know the author of, of that work. My, my soul hungers for you and thirsts for you as a deer um, pants for the, the, the rivers of water. So my soul longs after you, O oh God. That's what King David wrote. But that's the kind of fabric of what I'm trying to say with hunger and thirst. Where is this hunger and thirst driven from? You see, the Bible speaks about the love of God um, motivating him to come to us to to give of himself so that we could have everlasting life the the scripture that we all know so well for god so loved the world 
that he gave his one and only son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So when we come into seeing God's love for us and we accept his gift of love for us, the response is just that. It's relational. It's not just up here in the head. It's not um, just an intellectual decision for us to follow Christ and to come to him as a matter of duty. Although when we love God, we have a sense of duty to him. We, we want to please him. We desire to please him. But the primary motivation for that is not something that we can get out of the deal. It's, it's because we see all of a sudden that he is worthy of our affection. He is worthy of pursuing a relationship with. He is worthy because He is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord of all. And when we come to that point, the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And it's not the fear that causes us to run away and hide like Adam and Eve hid from God when they sinned in the Garden of Eden. That's not the fear that it's talking about. The fear of the Lord that draws us to, to Him is what it's talking about. It, it causes us to, to fall before His presence and say, Lord, I can't believe that you would love me, just little me. You love me for who I am. You created me. You know everything about me. And you've called me to your table. You've called me your child. You've called me to come into personal relationship with you, to know you. What manner of love the Father has given unto us that we should be called the children of God. It's like, when I consider the heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him? And the son of man that you would visit him. Jesus came down and visited us. He, he made a way for us to have intimacy and a relational connection with God. Not just a gateway so that we can know about God, but a gateway so that we can know the living God. For to know God is to know righteousness. For when we hunger and thirst for righteousness, we hunger and thirst for the living God because He is righteous. You see, when, when we become believers in Jesus Christ, He clothes us in a robe of righteousness. This is from Him. Oh, sometimes we get this wrong. Sometimes we, we become like robots where we lose connection with the whole purpose of it all. And we almost think that we, we owe a, a duty to God so that we can earn our right to be His children, earn our right to be close to Him. We, we figure like we have to somehow pursue righteousness so that God will give us some blessing in return, some, some in into His presence as, as if you know, like we, we approach prayer almost like it's a, a conjuring so that somehow we will, we will make him happy by the way we twist or turn or dance or pray or whatever. It's not about that. The fullness of God has been given to us in the Holy Spirit and he lives within us. There is no more love that God could give to us than what he's given to us in Jesus. He's opened the way for us to relate to Him and be close to Him, to be at one with Him, to grow in our relationship with Him. That is the hunger and thirst. Oh God, that I might know You, and I might know the power of Your resurrection, that I might see You for who You are in a greater depth every day. Oh Lord, my God, I love You. And I want to serve you. I want to live for you. I want to know you. Oh, that is the cry of my heart. That's what God is saying. When, it's, when he's saying this, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. We're thirsting after the living God, the source of righteousness. And when we seek God with all of our hearts, we will be filled with his righteousness. We'll be filled with his presence. And we're not seeking feelings here. Okay? We're seeking a person. We're seeking to know a person because He has loved us and He's called us to love Him. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. 
and the second commandment, love your neighbor as yourself. This is all what Christianity is uh, supposed to be. It's supposed to be relational, not just mere robotics out of a sense of duty, out of a sense of like cold, um, coldness. I, I got to read something for you because there's a connection point here in the book of Revelation um, that, that can't be ignored. Um, Revelation chapter 2, uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a message that the Lord Jesus Christ had um, to, to one of the seven churches. Revelation, first couple of chapters of Revelation were messages that Jesus had for the seven churches, representing the fullness of the spectrum of the churches throughout the ages. Every church fits into the spectrum somewhere. Now, there's a message for us in the message to the to the Ephesians, I believe, that ties in with this hungering and thirsting after the living God, hungering and thirsting for righteousness. I just got to turn there. Revelation chapter 2, and this is to the church in Ephesus. And uh, this is what he says. Jesus says in, in verse 2, he says, I know your deeds, your hard work, and your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked men. That you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not and have found them false. You have persevered and have endured hardships for my name and have not grown weary. So God has a lot of good things to say about these Ephesian believers. They're really doing some good things. They're standing firm. Their, their doctrine is in line with his word. The scriptures that have been revealed that have, that have you know, been like, they've been like the Bereans who look eagerly into the scriptures to see if what is being told to them is the truth or not. They're, they're, they're eager and hunger uh, for, 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 for truth is there. However, however, somewhere along the line, some of these Ephesians believers lost focus on the purpose. They lost focus on the purpose of why all this was important. And the purpose of why all this is important, the good sound doctrine and the persevering under hardship and, and uh, their intolerance of wickedness. The purpose of this was to build relational intimacy. See, we can't have relational intimacy that is godly while living in sin. And we can't have, we can't have relational intimacy with God if we're holding back and we're, we're not surrendered. So it's all about relationships, okay? And relational intimacy. Uh, the difference between a believer that is doctrinally sound and a believer that loves Jesus um, can be vast because you can be doctrinally sound but have a lost the connection point with your first love. And Jesus Jesus calls out to us and he says to the Ephesians here, he says to the Ephesians, that it can be applied to us. Um, you know, all these things are great. Continue in them, but don't forget the reason. I want to be relationally close to you. He says, yet that I, I have this against you, he says this. Okay, So he said all these good things and yet he says, I have this against you. You have forsaken your first love. Remember the height to which you have fallen. Repent and do the things that you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. But you have this in your favor. Here he gets, goes again with a positive. Right? You hate the practices of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. And... This is false teaching and, and stuff that's deviating away from the truth of God's word. So he, he reinforces that, hey, don't lose your focus on doctrine. Don't lose your focus on soundness. Be like the Bereans, but don't forsake your first love because all this is not made so that we are merely robotic in doing going about our business. What this, what, what relationship with Christ is all about it's about intimacy, about closeness, at one minute with God, about love. Love. Yes. Love not in the soft, mushy, gushy, 
you know, warped idea of what love is in the world. But 1 Corinthians chapter 13 defines love. This is what it's all about. God wants us to love others. He wants us to love Him first. And then the love that God has for us, that connection point and that growth and that relational um, beauty will flow out everywhere else with our relationship with other people. And uh, this is so important. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. Oh man, there's a reward for us who serve the Lord God and who are his children. Oh, we've got to keep our eyes on the mark. And, and let's not forget why we do what is righteous. It's not for anything but closeness with God. That's what it's all about. And there's a song that I come across by a man named Cody Carnes. And um, I'm just going to play it as a prayer to end this. Just some of the, a couple of the verses. It gets kind of repetitive on the end. But it, it's, if you look at this as, I want you, God, the fountain of righteousness. I just want you. Nothing else will do. I want, I want to love you, God, with all my heart. You're my Father, and you've given me everything, and I just want to, I just want to give back to you because you're worthy. Oh, man, I'm going to ball. Because this is it. This is where it's at, man. People of God, we got to get this. It's not about all the form. It's not about what we can get out of this deal. It's about what we can give to the God who gave us everything. He gave us everything, the breath of life. Oh, Lord, help us to be stewards of what you've given to us and give back to you everything that we are and everything that we have. I'm, I'm going to just end with this. God bless you all.